Hey, my name is Chris Ralph and I'm the professional prospector and today we're going to do a video on something that, well, a lot of people find pretty controversial. You know, have you ever wondered, does dowsing for gold really work? I mean, is that something you can do? Is it a thing that you could find gold? I mean, I've got literally many thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Um, I've got thousands of dollars worth of metal detectors. I've got lots of money in dry washers and uh, rock crushers and sluice boxes and pans and all kinds of other stuff. Could I really replace it with just a, a couple of copper wires that I could go along and, you know, when they crossed over, I'd know that there was gold there? Or, or maybe I'd just uh, replace all my research and, and stop reading old mining books and, and uh, history and that sort of thing. And I'd just get me a, a plumb bob like this and I'd put it over the map. And when the thing indicated on the map that it was time for me to, to you know, stop there, I would go out to that place and then I wouldn't need to do all that work researching. You know, maybe instead I'd just go the super simple route and I'd just have a Y-shaped piece of wood, a stick, and when it went, then I'd know that the gold was there. Like I say, it's controversial. Some people believe in it. Some people swear by it. But me, yeah, I'm, I'm more skeptical. I'm, I'm not so sure. And in fact, honestly, if you ask me what I think of dowsing, any kind of dowsing, dowsing for gold, dowsing for water, you know, whatever. I think it's a bunch of horse manure. Now, you can disagree with me, and hey, it's a free country. Uh, you have the right to your opinion, you have the right to be wrong. And, and maybe I'm wrong, I, I don't know. But uh, if, you, if you really are into dowsing, and you think dowsing is a real thing, and it really works, and, and you could find gold with dowsing, because I've had people write to me and tell me, oh yeah, I'm, I'm great at dowsing for gold. Uh, I'm always a little skeptical of that. Uh, you would think if dowsing was a real thing and you could find lots of gold dowsing, man, the guys with that skill that, that uh, had whatever psychic skill that they could figure out where the gold was, man, they'd be the most successful prospectors ever. They'd be finding a hundred times more gold than I do. Um, and they'd be living in a mansion and driving a Ferrari or, or whatever high dollar vehicles they wanted because they could just walk out into the woods and say, there, no, there, that's where all the gold is. Yeah, it, it, it's not that easy. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that I know that give you what my opinion really is. So, like I say, uh, there's a lot of stories about it, and, and most guys who really swear by dowsing have their own stories. I'm going to tell you a couple of mine. So, about it was, a little, it was over 10 years ago, 10, 12, maybe even 14 years ago, there was a guy out in Nevada who found some spectacular gold. This was uh, just the most beautiful crystalline gold. It was. It was a, an amazing piece, and there was five pieces in this set, and they were all kind of found together, and they, they kind of fit together to make like a triangular shape. The big piece, I think, was six or eight ounces, and there was a couple of two ounces and some half ounces or so, and uh, I think that when they finally sold that stuff, that the auction price was something like over $100,000. It was just amazing. And the guy announced to everybody, he said, he found it dowsing. Well, that kind of went against, you know, I've not believed in it for a long time. And, and I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. He found it dowsing. Hmm. Well, a year or two later, the rest of the story finally came out. And there's a, you know, there's a, there used to be a radio guy who uh, had a show called the, the rest of the story where he'd tell you something and it seemed to be going this way, but then he'd tell you the rest of the story and you'd realize, oh, it was something else. 
And that's kind of how it was with this guy. He said he found him dowsing. Okay, but what really happened was he uh, got out a map, a map that's well known in for an, an area that produces nuggets and produces gold. Heck, I found gold there too, and a lot of other people have. And he took out some sort of pendulum like this, and he went around and around on the map, and finally the, his pendulum, supposedly, selected a certain spot, and so he went out there, and he took his metal detector, and he found some nuggets with his metal detector. Well, that's, I mean, people will say that's map dowsing, but the truth is, I could take a map like that with plaster deposits all over it, and just look at it, no pendulum, no dowsing, just an experienced prospector and say, yeah, that looks like a good spot. Let me go out there and try that one. In fact, I've done that and found gold. I wasn't dowsing. I'm just looking at where things are and where the diggings are and, you know, all that kind of stuff and figuring out where the gold is likely to be. It's not really some kind of super psychic power. It's just a matter of being an experienced prospector and having some common sense. The guy did not go out in the field with, you know, a couple of copper wires and go, Voop! oh, there's gold right there. Yeah, that didn't happen. So that's one story that made me skeptical of, of dowsing. People who map dows, you know, it, it's, it's a, a thing where, like I say, I could look at a map. I do all the time and decide where the best place to dig is. Because you use a pendulum doesn't really, or some, a nugget on a string or some other thing like that, it doesn't make it magical. I'll tell you another story. Uh, some years back, uh, I knew a guy, a friend of mine, and uh, I was on a forum, he would participate on this forum, and uh, another guy came on the forum and said that he was an expert dowser and he had an electronic dowsing device. Uh, they call him an LRL, a long range locator. They call him other names too. Some of them not so complimentary. But anyway, he had this uh, LRL and he claimed that he could find gold all over the place with it and that it was a great piece of equipment. And now my friend who was on that same forum was a little, maybe a little less skeptical than me, but still pretty skeptical. And so he told the guy, he said, hey, um, why don't we make an arrangement? I'll take you out to a place that I know has gold nuggets. And you demonstrate that LRL for me because I want to use the best equipment. I don't care whether they call it an LRL or a, you know what they call it, you know, a horse is behind or whatever they call it. If it finds gold, I want it. And so he took it out there and he said, okay, he drove out there and he promised the guy to secrecy. And the guy got out there and he said, okay, there's gold right around here. I've found some pieces of gold here and I'm sure there's more left. So give your LRL a try. So he got out there and the guy tried it here and he tried it there and he followed it over here and he dug holes all over the place. And at the end of two hours, he had absolutely nothing. And so my friend said, all right, your turn is over. It's now my turn. And he got out his metal detector and he went around and within 15 minutes, he had a nugget and the nugget was no more than about 50 feet from the car. So the guy said, okay, that's the demonstration. You get an F, I get an A. And so the metal detector, it works. The LRL, not so much. So let's talk about some other things related to dowsing. Another thing I ask about dowsing is what, what is it? You know, if you believe in dowsing, okay, what is it? Is it some kind of psychic power that some people possess that other people don't? Um, you know, there are people that claim psychically to be able to predict the future and see what's going to happen and tell where there's going to be an earthquake or who's going to get elected or that sort of thing. And I got to tell you, if you just look at, you know, because it gets printed up in the paper and 
even something, well, mostly things like the National Enquirer, but um, they get printed up in the paper and other things sometimes, see it on the news, and generally their success rate for their predictions is pretty much zero. You know, I mean, if if a if, uh, uh, hundred psychics predict a hundred different things and, and they keep predicting and predicting, uh, eventually one of them's going to get something right. It reminds me of a... Uh, a lady who predicted the 1987 stock market crash where the Dow Jones just plummeted down in a few days. And she kind of predicted, and for a while, everybody just followed her. This lady knows what's gonna happen. And uh, it turned out within the next couple of years, all her predictions just stunk. She said, oh, you should buy this, or you should, should buy that, and you sell this. Yeah, and she was just wrong all over the place. So, you know, she got lucky once. And, uh, you know, that's the power of psychics that predict the future. There's some psychics that claim to be able to see hidden things or to read my palm lines and predict my love life or some other, you know, crazy stuff like that. And generally speaking, you know, that stuff is considered to be a joke that uh, sensible people, you know, look at that kind of stuff and say, yeah, that's just crazy. So, um, you know, if, if you really believe in dowsing for gold and you think it works and, and I can come out here with these copper wires and find something, but tell me in the comments what you think it really is. I mean, it really is a psychic skill that some people have. Well, if, if there really exists, you know, if, if you can uh, uh, see where gold is, how come you don't have pounds and pounds and pounds of gold? Like I say, how can we not living in a big house? Most of the people that I know that swear by dowsing live in a trailer and drive an old beat up car. You know, it, it's not something that's very profitable. Another story that people tell me a lot is that, well, maybe if dowsing doesn't work for gold, it'll work for water. You can just get out your, your Y-shaped stick and, you know, woo, woo, it'll tell you where there's water. You know, uh, they tell me, old Joe's been water witching for years and he's always had a good luck drilling wells. Well, okay, this is kind of like the uh, experienced prospector with the map. One is that old Joe's drilled a lot of wells. He's a water well and he, and he witches based on where he's found water before, okay? The other thing is, and, and this, this goes for people who have no experience drilling and, and, you know, find a place that they think there's water and turns out there is. Um, there's water everywhere, okay? Three quarters of planet Earth is covered with water, okay? And that's a lot of water. And even in the parts of the land where, you know, you have uh, not water, you have dirt and rocks, uh, there's groundwater underneath us from all that rain that's fallen over the last, you know, thousands of years. Even in the desert, there are, in most places where there's valleys and that kind of stuff, if you drill down, there'll be water. And you may have to drill a long ways, you know, that's, that's a thing, you know, sometimes you have to drill a long ways down, but there's water almost everywhere. So, you know, uh, the skill of dowsing for water is grossly overrated, all right? It's kind of like if you stood in front of a barn, you're 10 feet from the barn, it was right in front of you, and you closed your eyes and took a dart and threw it straight ahead, you'd hit the barn, right? Yeah, that's how dowsing for water is. There's water everywhere. Here, okay, yeah, there's water there. There, okay, yeah, there's water there. Over there, yeah, there's water there too. So dowsing for water is not really any great skill. It's not any more real than dowsing for gold. So you might ask, well, what do I think dowsing is? And in all honesty, I think it's a lot of wishful thinking. People that would like to have a skill of finding gold, just, you know, going out and doing it. It's a great thing to find. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, I think there's people that would wish that they had that magic psychic skill to be able to find gold. Enough to convince them their own selves that the skill is real. But the truth is it's not. So stick to your pans and your metal detectors and your dry washers and your high bankers and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
you know, uh, swinging a pendulum is a lot easier than doing research to figure out where to go for gold. You know, you can hope that that pendulum points you to the right spot. But, you know, it, it, it probably won't. And so, uh, stick to your research, stick to your pan, stick to your metal detectors and, and all the rest of your equipment, your rock crushers and whatever else that works to find gold, whatever is real. And, you know, if you want to learn to really find gold, not in some imaginary way or wishful way that's not fulfilled, then I wrote a book about prospecting and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about it right now. Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, I wanted to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained about finding gold and, and how to be successful. And so I spent years literally writing this book, Fistful of Gold. It's more than 350 pages long, which is why I say it's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about finding your own gold. Um, I've sold more than 8,000 copies and I've got a lot of really great feedback on it. It just is the most complete book on the market. It has information about finding gold that literally is not available in any other book that you're going to find for prospectors because I took technical stuff from geologists and other um, mineral scientists and I've translated that into language that the average guy can understand. You don't need a PhD to go out and find gold, but the information that scientists have learned over recent decades can can be of a lot of help to people. So it's in this book. Uh, if you're interested about finding gold, panning, sluicing, nugget detecting, uh, dry washing, the geology of gold deposits and how they form, it's all in here. And like I say, it's more than 350 pages long. So if you'll just go to the description underneath this video, um, you can take a look. I've got a link in there to take you to Amazon to the site where the book is sold. And I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. Take, take a look at all the people who've commented on this and have really liked the book. It has a, a very, very high rating for a book. And also, I have a, a website, my own free website that uh, you can take a look at. Um, I've got all kinds of information on here about uh, doing research and how to find gold, a lot of good information, stuff that basically uh, couldn't fit into my book. And so I put it on this website and I have a, a link also for that in the video description. So take a look in the description and you can click on the, uh, the link and it'll take you to my website. And finally, if you like this presentation, I've got a lot more coming out. Here's a three and a half ounces of gold that I found a couple of years back in one area. Um, I've got a lot more of these videos coming on gold, gemstones, hard rock, placer, a lot of metal detecting. There'll be lots of metal detecting stuff. So if you really enjoyed this, click the subscribe button and then tick the notification bell off and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff. And hit the like button as well. And please comment on these videos because I'm interested in what you have to say. And I promise to answer any questions you have. So if you are wondering about anything or think maybe I didn't cover something thoroughly enough in a video, then let me know and I'll be happy to try and help you out and give you whatever information you need. So thanks a lot and um, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again real soon.